When we started scaling up the size of batches that we were making, this was the first chiller that I bought. It's a counterflow chiller with copper on the outside and copper on the inside. It did a pretty good job. And shortly after, when we got up into about the 30 gallon range, we actually got a second similar chiller and we ended up using those two in tandem to get the same job done. That's what we did for the majority of our, all the way up until brewing on the two barrel scale here. Uh, and then last year, Exchillerator actually sent us uh, this guy right here which you can tell has been used recently, and uh, the smaller version. So this is the uh, Brutus, their big chiller, and then they also have the Accelerator Max, I think is what their, their red one is called. Um, but today we're gonna talk about the difference between using a counterflow chiller and a immersion chiller, uh, and why we've been using the Accelerator, uh, Brutus Accelerator for the last year. First of all, the difference between a counterflow chiller, which are these guys, where your wort runs through one direction and cold water runs through the other direction, and an immersion chiller actually makes a pretty big difference in technically how you make beer. And there are times where I'll use both for different reasons. If you're using an immersion chiller, you've got your big batch of wort and your hops and whatever other, if you're doing spices or whatever, are steeping in the vessel and the entire batch is cooling down at the same time. But if you're using a counterflow chiller, your entire batch chills in line, which means that there's always close to or uh, all the way boiling temperature wort that's on one end with your hops and everything in it. And there is very cold fermentation temperature wort going into your fermenter. Uh, the problem with that is it becomes very difficult to calculate hop utilization with these because your hot liquid is still mm -hmm. isomerizing hops. And so a zero minute addition using a counterflow chiller straight isn't really a zero minute addition. Whereas with an immersion chiller, this is going to immediately drop temperature at least some degree and your hop utilization is easily calculable. The downside to using an immersion chiller is that it is hard to determine what that chill down time is going to take. And so if you're using either one of these, one of the most important things to think about is if you're calculating your boil time, are you taking into account the amount of time it takes to chill down or the amount of time it takes for your entire batch to go through a single pass with a counterflow. How I like to work that through is if I'm doing a big hoppy beer on a counterflow chiller, I'll usually go out of my kettle with all the hops and gunk in there, into my counterflow chiller, and then back into my kettle for a single pass and actually chill down the big vat while I'm doing my zero minute addition. I'll get the entire big vat down to 190, 180 degrees before I single pass into my fermenter. And that also puts less stress on my chiller, especially in warm summer months where the groundwater is warm, to make sure that my chiller can get my water down to, uh, down to pitching temperature very quickly. If I'm using both, Usually the reason behind that is that I want everything to happen very quickly. And so I'll have cold water going into this. I'm immediately getting my big batch of wort chilled down a little bit. And I'm also getting a single pass into my fermenter of cold yeast temperature wort. So that's kind of the difference between those two. It's just important to calculate. These are much easier to use and take less cleaning because all the uh, outside is where all the beer sits and on the inside you only have water. These are much more difficult to clean and take more regular maintenance because you have to run chemicals through these every single time and sometimes you want to run them through in both directions to make sure that you're getting all the gunk that can stick in these because the inside of these is jagged so that you maximize the time that your wort is touching water. Now this guy right here brand new ran me around $200 whereas an immersion chiller like this uh, for a starting five might work up to 10 gallon batch, runs anywhere between 70 and $100. And there are better versions of this that also run up to $200. But those ones will probably end up doing a much bigger batch than these ones will. Um, the accelerator, I actually don't remember how much it costs because they sent it to me for free. Thanks guys. Uh, but I'll put that price up here. And this guy uh, is able to by itself do what these two combined were doing for us. And so we were able to get our entire two barrel batch chilled with this guy in a single pass, as long as we have some sort of resistance on the back end to slow down the wort enough. To get this chilled through, it takes about 40 minutes uh, in a single pass in cold winter months. And if we're not pre-chilling at all, it might take closer to an hour 20 to get through into our fermenter in a single pass in this. Now I did get the Accelerator Brutus with the tri-clamp uh, uh, fittings and one of the negatives of it is I actually already broke off one. So while these are very, very sturdy and they come with legs so that you can kind of set them wherever uh, while you're doing your chilling, if you start relying on what I was doing, which was a lot of heavy, you know, my oxygen stone and a heavy tube um, all on this. And I was actually holding this um, on my setup 
rather than letting this sit on its legs. I did end up breaking off one of the tri clamps. That hasn't really bothered me so far because I use uh, silicone tubings for a lot of things. So I just kind of shove that over that. Um, so the, the quality of the, of the welds onto the tri-clamps, I think could use some work, uh, but for overall chilling efficiency, this thing's worked really well for us. And we did completely switch over to that for the last year. Uh, I think for the cost efficiency, it's definitely worth it. Um, also the smaller version of this, the Accelerator Max, uh, the, the red version, um, we gave to another local brewery. And I think they've been using that for the last year too. And still on a two barrel setup, does the job, does the job. I'm looking at somebody who's brewed for that brewery. Now, while this video isn't to endorse the accelerator, this is the chiller that we have been using for the last year, uh, even over using two of these combined, having access to glycol water or glycol to pre-chill water if we need to, um, and all of the immersion chillers we've got. This is our go-to for every batch of beer we make right now, uh, and it does get the job done. So to, to kind of recap, uh, in general, if you're using a counterflow chiller, there are struggles. And usually if I'm already gonna build into counterflow, I'm gonna build in something like inline filtration. Um, it might be a better opportunity to use a hop back because you can use a hop back to put hops and filtration in before going into the chiller if you have it set up properly to gravity feed into the chiller. Um, uh, but there are some more technical engineering challenges that come with using a counterflow chiller. These are way easier and on average they're cheaper. And in terms of full functionality, an immersion chiller gets the job done on most batches five gallons and under. And you'll probably see me if I'm making a batch of beer on my uh, Bruzilla or something like that on the five gallon scale or under, um, I'm probably gonna use an immersion chiller. But in terms of overall function, there are a lot of engineering benefits that come from using an uh, immersion chiller in how you can infuse flavors, hops, everything. And on the larger scale, they scale much better than having a bigger and bigger and bigger twirly thing. I hope that kind of sums up why you would get an a counterflow chiller over an immersion chiller. Uh, if you want to check out Accelerator's uh, website, I'll probably link that below so you can see that. Um, these I think I got off of more beer or something like that if you want to check those out too. Uh, Accelerator also sent us some uh, PBW substitute, some awesome cleaner that we've been using for a lot of our stuff. And something that we haven't used yet, which is their hangover, but I think I saw Trent use that, uh, the brew show, on one of his videos if you want to check that out. Um, and that's all I got for this. Uh, we've been using this for the last year on all our batches. And so if you see us do a big batch in the brew house, which I'll probably start videoing a lot more of in the future, then you'll probably see this one being what we connect everything to, to do our chilling. We'll see you. Uh, I, I mean, I, I won't see most of you. I'm going to be honest, but you're there. I'm here. Um, so that makes you come to come here. We have beer. Um, you should come here and buy that. We all, oh, there's a, the one of those beers right here. And there's also, uh, what's this thing? That's uh, called a shirt. Those exist. And we'll see you next time.